What's up YouTube, Dell here from Zephyr, and today I am bringing you the budget build you have all been waiting for, and that is the Fire King Dogmatica Sinful Spoils build. Now, first off, as soon as you hear Sinful Spoils, if you've seen my previous profile, check it out in the link in the description below. You can make Sinful Spoils budget and it can benefit the deck. So before you judge, check it out. I'll also put the Dogmatica build in the comments below as well, just so you can kind of see the different versions and how you want to go. So you've picked up three of the Fire King Structure Decks for Christmas and you want to upgrade it to compete. Where can you go? Well, this is definitely one of those versions. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. I'm going to dive straight into the profile and explain everything as we go so you know exactly why we've adapted the ratios and what you can get from each of the different engines. So we start off with the core cards for the Fire Kings being Triple Ponix, Double Garunix, and Triple Kirim. Now this to me, in my opinion, is probably the base minimum. Sometimes you might want to consider cutting Ponix down to two because you have loads of different ways to get to it. Honestly, I feel that three is just the safest route to go, especially with some of the combos. Opening up Ponix can be quite important because it will give you other options. We aren't playing Link Apple in this version, um, so it does kind of mean that you could cut Ponix down to two if you wanted to, but honestly, you want to try and minimize your search in where at all possible, just because Draw and Lockbird is floating around in the format. For the Beast Warrior Monsters, we have gone back down to one Barong and one Avatar. Um, Avata. I have been considering the spell card that lets you basically monster reborn. Um, just because it's a kind of a cool option, it's not a hard once per turn, I believe it's called Fire Recovery. It came as a super in uh, Age of Overlord. So that's something to look into. And what that kind of gives you is it gives you the ability to kind of like monster reborn one of your fire monsters and also recycle them from the graveyard. So it's how you can get these guys back into the deck. But more times than not, you'll bring these back from the graveyard with stuff like Kirin and then destroy the Advata and then Advata can bring back Barong to give you a search for the next turn. Uh, the other card that we are playing purely for the Snake Eyes version, so if you're not playing the Snake Eyes in this deck, then you can very easily cut this card and bump up either your Avata or you can put in more hand traps, is of course Tenki. Now the reason we're playing Tenki in this version is because Tenki is the perfect card to send preview off of the original Sinful Spoils Snake Eyes. And the reason it's the perfect card to send is because it's a continuous spell card that's already done what it needs to do. You're not really that fussed about the additional 100 attack that your Beast Warriors will get. Once you've searched out your monster, Sinful Spoils is then a great option. It then also gives you another fallback. So what you've got to kind of look into this is for your Sinful Spoils engine, your power card is of course going to be the original Sinful Spoils. For the Dogmatica package, your power card is of course going to be Nadir Servant. Now, the Deer Servant and Tenki clash because both of them add, so if you do get drolled, you're not going to have a fallback. What Tenki and the Deer do benefit from, though, is if they do ash the Tenki, you then know that your Servant's going to go through, or you'll also know that your Sinful Spoils is going to go through. So there's loads of different ways where having multiple cards like this will help you out going forward, just to kind of bait out a hand trap. Each of the different engines has their own search card, less so search for sinful spoils, more so a summon, but it still gives you what you need as the ultimate outcome. So when you're combining these together, what you're basically saying to your opponent is, if you stop Tenki, I might have a sinful spoils. If you stop sinful spoils, I might have an Adir. And all of those cards are technical one card combos that get you started. More so in the form of Nadir as the one card combo, because obviously sinful does need you that card to send. So that's why we're playing Tenki. Like I said, the main reason for Tenki is to synergize with the original Sinful Spoils. So if you're not playing the original Sinful Spoils little package, then cut the Tenkis completely and they can become three more hand traps or board breakers entirely up to you. Uh, we've then got Triple Sanctuary. Now this is another card that I've like always kind of contemplated cutting down to two. And every time I've gone to go take one out, I've gone, nope, don't be stupid, keep it in at three. Um, and then I always draw into it. So you do have a bit of draw power in this deck, which is really, really nice. Um, but the other benefit of something like a Fire King Sanctuary is, again, because it's a continuous spell card, you can send it off of the back of the original Sinful Spoils. Now, what you do sacrifice when you do send it off of the original Sinful Spoils is the ability to XYZ summon during your opponent's turn, and, of course, the protection ability for the Fire King Island. The more and more people play Fire Kings and the more and more people play against Fire Kings, the more and more people will target the Fire King Island, so you do need to kind of protect yourself with the Sanctuary. 
So two of Viking Island is definitely more than enough. Sometimes it feels like it's too much, but then there are the times when you'll play the first copy, your opponent will get rid of it and you'll go, damn, I really wish I had a second. So this ratio is absolute staple in my opinion. And then for the final two Fire King cards, you're going to want to be going for, of course, the amazing Fire King Skyburn. So this card's just absolutely insane as a nice little all-round um, torrential tribute, I would say. Um, just you control when you activate it. And then the other card that I really like to play is the Circle of the Fire Kings. Now this has loads of different applications. What you've got to remember is it targets a fire monster you control and a fire monster in your graveyard. So your Flame Bird Dragon is a fire. So it means that this could be one of the targets that you can bring back or destroy. Now, obviously, for those of you unfamiliar with the Flame Bird Dragon, what it does is if it is destroyed, or basically if it is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, you special summon exactly two level one fire monsters from your graveyard, which is really nice, because what you'll be doing is you'll be bringing back your Snake Eyes Ash, and you'll be bringing back your Ponyx. On top of that as well, the reason it's cool to come it back from the graveyard during your opponent's turn is it lets you target a face-up monster on the field or in either graveyard and place it into the spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. So that's what you do during your turn. Then during your opponent's turn, you gain a quick effect to target a monster that is treated as a continuous spell on the field and you special summon it to your field. So what that's kind of nice about is you could even put one of your cards from the graveyard into your spell and trap zone, bring this back to the board, use this effect to summon it out. And that can be something like a Kirin, that can be something like an Avata, a Barong, or a Ponic. So you've got loads of different options there. Uh, on top of that as well, Circle of the Fire Kings can give you a very nice aggressive push. Being a quick play, it can be used during the battle phase. So if you're going second and you make Eternity and then destroy the entire board, and you're like, right, okay, cool, I don't have anything more to do apart from Circle. So what you do is you go into battle phase, you attack with your Eternity doing 3000 damage. You then activate Circle to destroy the Eternity, bring back any fire monster. Eternity will then trigger. Depending on how many materials it has, it will bring back multiple monsters. So if it has two materials, it will bring back two monsters, which will ultimately, when you're looking at the cards that make this being Garunix and uh, Kirin, that should be enough to push you in for game of exactly, I believe, six, uh, 8,100. Uh, not to mention the card you bring back with Circle, you could even get a killing blow with Ponyx. Moving on to the Snake Eyes engine, so for the monsters of course you do play the one Flame Bird Dragon and the one Ash. Now more times than not you want the Ash to be summoned off of the back of the original Sinful Spoils. The reason for that is, is that your Ash can lead you to a Ponyx. So if you special summon out the Ash, if it is normal or special you get to add a level 1 fire monster from your deck to the hand, so that's your Ponyx. You can send two face-up cards you control to the graveyard, including this card, to special summon a Snake Eyes monster from your hand or deck, except itself. So that's how you get into the Flame Bird Dragon. So if you watched the previous budget version of this deck, you'll see how this combo works and how it can work your way into something like a Heat Soul Talker to draw you more cards to either extend, looking for Nadir Servant, or just to protect in forms of hand traps that we will be playing. Then of course we are playing triple of the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eyes. Now if you're not on a budget and you have access to Wanted and Witch, then of course you'd add them in and you could minimize these down. But as we are on a budget and when you're considering these are at current six pound a copy, but then your uh, Witch is 25 to 30 pound and then your Wanted is like 70 pound, it's wild. So this is definitely the budget engine. A lot of people doubted this when I put Sinful Spoils in the title, but that's because instantly a lot of people uh, associate Sinful spoils to witch and wanted and they completely ignore that these cards exist that can help out the strategy of the fire kings just as much and the best thing about it is it doesn't clash with the nadir package either speaking of the nadir package we do play the one maximus and the one Fledelis, followed up by the triple nadir servant so again, pretty straightforward and simple on this one. I've shown you the one card combo of the Nadir Servant. Um, I mean, I might put both of the combos at the end of this video. Let's see. Um, but the idea is that off the Nadir Servant, you're gonna be able to get into your Ponyx. Ponyx then becomes your normal summon for that turn. And then that's when you would go and focus on XYZ summoning during your opponent's turn. Now, obviously, the difference between the two of these is your Nadir and your original Sinful Spoils pretty much have the exact same out goal. They're all going to try and get you to Ponyx. So they are doing the same jobs. What you're giving yourself is you're giving you more consistency to do that job, which is why you could then arguably put Ponyx down to two. It's also why you could consider playing another level one fire monster. Now, the most meta relevant one to play would be Kurokara, but obviously Kurokara is a lot more expensive, which is why in the previous build I showed you Link Apple, as Link Apple could become a draw or it could become a summon. So it gave you a bit of variation. 
You could play something like Salaman Great Sun, uh, Salaman Great Mole, which just guarantees you to be a summon when you link summon. However, what I didn't like, uh, what I liked about the apple was the fact that it could be a draw if I can't summon, and it could be a summon if I can't draw. So it does give you that very very thin uh, option of versatility. Then before we move into the hand traps, the two counter cards, because you do need to deal with draws and, and some sort of hand traps, I've gone with one Call Bite and an Instant Fusion. Now the way I see it is my Instant Fusion is technically a second copy of Call by the Grave, but it does take up a space in the extra deck. Because you'll play Instant Fusion, you'll summon out Millennium Eyes Restrict, and Millennium Eyes Restrict then gives you the ability to kind of protect you from most hand traps. And that's the way that you can get past um, Draw and Lockbird which can be a bit of an annoyance um, depending on when they try and drop it. Now, obviously, more times than not, they're going to try and drop it off of the back of your tanky. And like when they drop it off the back of Nadir, yes, it is painful because you're Nadir, you're going to want to draw and you're also going to want to search. Uh, but you should be using Nadir as like one of the last cards you play in your entire hand, which means you can play for a lot more. Uh, for the hand traps, of course, we've gone with Triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs, followed up by Triple Infinite Impermanence. Now, again, you can adapt this as you see fit. You can main deck Drolls if you want to. If you don't want to play both the Dogmatica package and the Sinful Spoils package, again, you can then cut those out, and that gives you five more spaces for Board Breakers in the form of Forbidden Droplet, Dark Roll No More, or Book of Eclipse, followed up by more hand traps like Veilers and Drolls. The last hand trap that I am playing is something that I want to test out for this upcoming format, and that is Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Now, the reason I think Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit could be pretty cool is it can give you a way to out the Fire King Sanctuary. It can give you a way to out the Fire King Island or force them to protect the Fire King Island. It can also help you deal with King Sarcophagus, which will be utilized in the Horus strategy going forward. And I feel that it's a hand trap that, again, a lot of people undervalue and forget about. A lot of people are prepared for their monster to be negated via a card like Imperm or Ash, but they are not prepared for it to be destroyed. So when you look at something in the Orca's strategy like the Geasu Mech Knight, if it gets Ashed, yes, it stops them sending a card from deck to graveyard, but it then doesn't stop them spawning in the tokens. If it gets Impermed or Veiled, they still have a monster on the board, so that if they're able to get a Corrupted Ibli into the graveyard, they can then still continue their combo. So when you're activating something like Ghost Dog, you can go, yeah, okay, cool, you can have your Foolish Burial, but you're no longer going to have that monster on the board. It then means that if they wanted to activate something like Harp Horror, an Ash on that Harp Horror ends their entire turn. Or if they do resolve the Harp Horror and put a monster on the board, they still need to get an additional monster to the graveyard in order to continue their plays. And even then, it still causes them a lot of issues to try and build up their board. So it's just an example that I feel a lot of people are prepared, like I said, for their monster to be negated, they're not prepared for it to be destroyed. So that's it for the entire list, that is a 40 card list. If you want to bump it to 42 and add more hand traps in, by all means, you can very easily do so. So what this is kind of sacrificing in comparison to the single builds, like I said, is it's a five card engines that are then taking up five either board breakers or hand traps. So you're increasing your consistency with five cards, but taking away your interaction with your opponent. Moving on to the extra deck, we'll start off with the XYZ. So for the XYZs, you've got the one Garuna, uh, Garunix Eternity um, of the Fire Kings, and then we've got the one Ding. Now, I personally think Ding is one of the most important rank 8s right now, especially in a Fire King matchup, because that non-target send is so much more important than destruction. Not to mention that Ding does give you that ability to protect your stuff should it be destroyed by card effect, which is quite important for quite a lot of your cards as well. Uh, onto the fusion monsters, of course, you do have the one instant target, which is your Millennium Eyes Restrict. And then for your targets to come off the back of Maximus, or of course Nadir, you've got your Titanicide, which will search you out or summon you out the Fleur Delis. Uh, you've got your Elder Entity to pop a card. You've got your Garura to give you a draw. Now you'll also see as I've gone through this build that I've taken out the Shadol package in the main deck. That is something you can definitely consider down to personal preference or for your side deck. It's one card in the main deck and it's two cards in the extra deck. So that's where you can adapt some of your other cards so you do have an additional fallback. For the Link Monsters, starting off with our Link Ones, of course, we've got the Almirage, Relinqu Relinquish Anima, and of course, Link Karibo. So you've got your defensive option in Link Karibo, you've got your second, go second aggressive option in Relinquish Anima, and then of course, you've just got your out and out right Salamagre Almirage, and the benefit this has over these two is the fact that it's fire as well. 
Uh, and then of course for our Link 2s, I've got the One Pit Night Earl. I actually still really like this just because if I do destroy, uh, dis decide to make my Grunix Eternity and destroy the Pit Knight, um, obviously I can negate a card first, but then my Pit Knight can then come back during the end phase. So it's a nice little float. But this is one of the cards you can cut for the Shadol cards should you want to. Uh, the One Heater, the Fire Charmer, you know, very, very good card. Uh, Son of Man, Great Sun, like Wolf, so regain some resource as well as being able to push yourself into a Decode Talker Heat Cell for those additional draws as well. And then the final two cards is you've got your one Shurag, the Ominous Omen, which will get sent off of the back of Maximus to give you that search for your Ponyx. And for those of you, like I said, that haven't seen the combo, the idea is that off of Nadir Servant, you send Garura. Garura will then give you a draw. You banish the Garura to summon down the Maximus. Maximus will then send Shurag and then one other card. In this example, will probably be your Titanoclad. And then what you'll do is you'll search out a Ponyx and you'll also search out a Fleur Delis. And then the final card is Appalooza. This, if you want to be spicy, can very easily be an Avramax if you want to. Um, if you have access to it, it could be an access code talker because you'll see we go through a lot of uh, extra deck options. But what you've got to remember is whatever you make, you have to do it before you activate Nadir Servant. And that is just another different way to look at it or another different option. So that's it for the entire build. Um, I think just to kind of like encapsulate everything in one video, I'll show you the two combos uh, at the end and then you can see how they can be utilized in the deck. And then what you'll do is when you're merging them together, you can pretty much get the same end board that you're gonna see from each individual combo as a collective. So back in a second. So starting off with the one card combo, the one card combo is of course in the Dear Servant. Now this can be started at the beginning of your turn or at the end of the turn, which is why when you're playing at loads of different other engines, you can burn through quite a lot of resource. So you're gonna activate your Nadir Servant. This is going to send a Garura, the Wings of Resonance Life from your extra deck to the graveyard. You'll then be able to resolve Nadir by searching out your Dolmatica Maximus, and then you'll resolve the Grura Wings of Resonance Life to draw a card. You will then summon down your Maximus by banishing the Garura from the graveyard, and then you'll be able to use Maximus's effect, and this will let you send two monsters from your extra deck to the graveyard. So going first, we're gonna send a Shurag the Ominous Omen, and we're gonna send a Titanoclad the Ash Dragon. Send it into the graveyard, your Shurag will trigger because you've got one banished wing beast monster. This will allow you to search out your Ponyx. You'll then be able to conduct your normal summon as you haven't done that yet. So you're gonna normal summon down your Ponyx and Ponyx will search you out the Fire King Sanctuary. You're gonna activate the Sanctuary which will allow you to activate Fire King Island directly from the deck. You'll then be able to use Fire King Island to destroy a monster. Now obviously we're gonna destroy the Ponyx because it'll give us the most resource management later on in the turn. So destroy the Ponyx and you're gonna add the Garunix. Garunix effect will now trigger in the hand and this will allow you to special summon down the Garunix. You'll then use Garunix's effect to destroy a fire monster in the deck and that's gonna be your Barong. You're then gonna to move to the end phase. You're gonna resolve Titanoclad in the graveyard which will allow you to add your Dogmatica Fladelis. So you've now got two additional cards in the hand, not to mention the remaining four that you would have started with as well. So very nice full hand and if these are all hand traps, or more back row, you have loads of different options. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pass your opponent's turn. During the standby phase, you're gonna resolve the Ponyx to add this back to your hand, and then you're gonna resolve the Barong to add you the Kirin. So what this now gives you is during your opponent's turn, at the very minimum, is you've got the ability to summon down the Kirin uh, by destroying the Ponyx, and this is gonna loop back to your hand during the next turn anyway. Then you've got the ability, should they special summon, to go into Sanctuary, and this will allow you to go into your Eternity to nuke the board. So that's option number one. On top of that as well, what you then get the ability for, because you control a monster from the extra deck, is you can summon Fleur Delis down at any point. So if you're like, right, I want to summon this down during the end phase, so that I've got another monster, a monster on board as presence, comes back to me for my next turn, and this will push for the OTK. Alternatively, what you have before you activate the Kirin, if we just reset this a little bit, is you can summon down the Fleur Delis. This will negate one of your opponent's cards because it's non-target, which is very, very nice. Um, and then you would then do the Kirin, summon down, overlay, Garunix, nuke the board. You would lose an additional monster, but that does mean you can negate a monster. So if there's a monster on the board that threatens your board, or if there's a monster on the board that would be immune from destruction, you can negate it and then Garunix Eternity to nuke the entire board and go from there. So that's it for the one card combo. Now I'm gonna show you how the Sinful Spoils engine works within the deck as well. Upgrading for a two card combo, it does specifically require Sinful Spoils, so it's quite like requiring a deer for the original combo. And then you need a card that will lead you to a continuous card you can get rid of. 
I'm gonna show you what happens when you open up Tenki as this will allow you to get the most advantage and leave Sanctuary on the board. So you're gonna start off by activating your Tenki. Tenki is then going to allow you to search out one of your Beast Warriors. I'm gonna go for a Vata so that I have a Monster Negate follow up should I need to. Then what you'll do here is you'll activate the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eyes and this will send the Tenki to the graveyard in order to special summon the Ash from the deck. Ash's effect will then trigger to add you your Ponyx. As we have not conducted our normal summon for this turn, you can normal summon down the Ponyx, trigger its own effect to get you the Sanctuary. Activate the Sanctuary, which will activate the Fire King Island from the deck. Very nice synergy. Now before you activate Fire King Island, you want to use Ash's second effect to send itself and Ponyx to the graveyard and summon out the Flameberg Dragon. At this point, if your opponent has a monster in the graveyard or you have another monster not including these two in your graveyard, you can put it into the spell and trap zone so that when you get this back or if you get this back during your opponent's turn, you can summon it. So what you're gonna do here is you're now gonna use Fire King Island, you're gonna destroy it, the Flameberg Dragon, and you're gonna add the Garunix. You'll then be able to activate Garunix effect to summon and of course the Flameberg Dragon to summon. So this will then summon back your Ash and your Ponyx while summoning down the Garunix. You'll then use Garunix's effect as we always do, and this one will destroy the Barong in the deck. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do here is you're gonna use Garunix and then one of the level ones to link summon into a Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. In doing so, you'll then use the remaining level one and turn that into a Link Karibo. This will then trigger Sunlight Wolf's effect to add you a fire monster back from the graveyard. And the one that I would personally go for is of course going to be the Flameberg Dragon. The reason you're gonna go for this is when you pop this during your opponent's turn for Kirin, you can actually then summon back your Ash and your Ponyx. So that will allow you to trigger Ponyx to get you your Fire King Skyburn and then trigger the Ash to get you another Ponyx for a follow up for the next turn as well. Not to mention you can also bring back the Garunix. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add back the Flamebow Dragon. So our hand from two cards, we've now replenished those two cards. Uh, you're then going to link your Link Karibo and your Sunlight Wolf together and you're gonna go into your Deco Talker Heat Soul. For the low, low cost of Upstart Goblin, you're gonna pay a thousand life points and you're gonna draw one more card. Now keeping in mind from the remaining hand as well, you'll still have three additional cards. So if these are more hand traps, if these are more board breakers, if they are more forms of interruption, you are in a very good position. So then what you're gonna do here is you're gonna pass to your opponent's turn. During the draw phase, you're gonna to want to activate the Deco Talker Heat Soul because then your opponent can't draw you, which is very nice. So then you're gonna draw one more random card. So you've now fully, I'm just gonna move Sanctuary over a little bit, fully replenish your entire hand of seven. Then as soon as we get into the standby phase, you're going to resolve the effect of Barong, and this is going to allow you to add from your deck to the hand a Kirin. So as you can see, we're definitely covered with all of our different options. If I want to do the Barong loop, I can destroy the Avatar. If I want to get back the Ponyx and the Snake Eyes, I can get rid of the Flameberg. So I've got a lot going for me. Yes, I am down 2000 life points, but the best thing about this is if I really, really want to, just as an example, you can activate your Fire King High Avatar Kirin. This will then allow you to destroy the Flameberg in the hand. This will then allow you to trigger the effect of Flameberg and uh, Garunix. So Garunix will then come back and the Flameberg will summon back the two here as well. You then be able to trigger Ash effect off here and Ash will allow you to add Ponyx and um, Ponyx will then allow you to add you any of your Fire King cards. So if you want to go for a bit more aggression, you could go for Circle. If you want to go for a bit more Board Wipe, you can go for Skyburn. So you'll add those to the hand, and as you can see, again, you've basically replaced the two you need to. Then should your opponent Special Summon, you can very easily overlay these two because of Sanctuary and go into Eternity. And yes, of course, you would lose your Heat Soul, you would lose your Snake Eyes, and you'd lose your Ponyx. But by clearing that entire off, you've cleared off your opponent's board as well. Then as it comes back to you, you're gonna draw one more card for turn and you are pretty much stacked. It's absolutely insane. Not to mention that should you destroy the Eternity, you'll be able to bring two cards back from the graveyard or you can choose to bring back one just by destroying one of your opponent's back row should they have to set and pass. You've then got the ability of your Fire King Skyburn to destroy this, bring it back and we'll bring back the Avatar and because you detached the material being the Garunix, Garunix will then also come back as well. So you've cleared off one, you've popped a back row, and you're now back into this exact same position. Not to mention you've got all these cards in your hand, two that are known, and any of these could be popped off the back of the Fire King Island to continue your plays. 
So it's absolutely insane. I really do like what the two combos can offer the deck. And then when you add these both together, it just gives you a bit more resilience. So yes, of course, the first one was a two car combo or this one was a two car combo. But when you add that with the one car combo, should the first one get stopped, which obviously you want to start with the two card sinful combo, should that one get stopped, you then fall back on the deer. And the only card that stops those plays um, would be a draw and lock bird. And even then when they draw on Lot Bird you, there's still ways to play around it to at least have a bit of a board presence before you end the turn. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's given you an insight into the deck itself and how the engines can kind of work together just by giving you a bit more consistency. Like I said, I'll put the, in the link in the description below both the separate versions as well. So you feel like, okay, I like the idea of how each of them work, but I don't want to play them together. I want to kind of focus down one streamlined option. Uh, then you can have a look to see how the build goes and work it from there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time, as absolutely always, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.